Time passes, but some events are too important to be consigned to oblivion. A hundred years ago, German soldiers marauded through the now peaceful streets of Louvain, looting and killing. This one is the, the grandfather of my father. Right. So these are the German soldiers? Yes, and then they take them mm -hmm. and uh, shoot them. Marie-Thérèse Delcan found a box of photographs when her parents died. She doesn't know who took or collected them. When you were a child, did the family talk about what had happened in the First World War? No, a little, a little. Only a little? Yes. Voilà, Delcan, ici. The name of her great-grandfather, Joseph Delcan, is on the monument to the 248 civilians murdered in five terrible days in August 1914. He, like many others, was forced to dig his own grave before he was killed. Today, little remains of Louvain as it was. The Germans burnt it to the ground, including the famous medieval library. It was the smell, the smell of smoke, and it stayed a long time. Whenever we returned to Louvain, that smell of burning would be there. It was in the fields, in the ditches, on the walls, everywhere. It was the smell of Louvain. Marie Le Grand sits with her daughter, Danielle. Hard to believe it, but she's 103 and the sole living survivor of the sack of Louvain. The sound of their boots, that remains with me. The soldiers went through Louvain, but they never realized that huddled in the cellars, there was a whole society of children. Papa would do this. We would put our heads down if we wanted to talk, or we would whisper. Papa would say, listen, and we would look at his finger. Papa nous protège. Papa protected us, so we had to obey him because he was doing it for our own good. If you make a noise, the Germans will come down and kill you. Marie and her family walked for 35 kilometers to Brussels. All 10,000 residents of Louvain were forced to flee. The Germans said they were rooting out snipers known as francs-tireurs, but in fact they were making sure the Belgians and the world knew that they would stop at nothing. The Germans had a terrible cruelty. They said they were defending themselves against francs-tireurs, but it wasn't true. There were no francs-tireurs, just families. Two days earlier, a few miles away in Dinan, German troops shot dead more than 600 people in the worst massacre of the war in Belgium. The names of 40 workers at a textile factory killed with their boss, Michel Hubert's great-grandfather. As French soldiers fired on the Germans from across the river Meuse, German troops forced the workers to abandon the factory where they were hiding. Women and children were put in the abbey, and as the door closed, Rémi Imer, Michel's great-grandfather, made a plea for his workers. He said, I will give you my entire fortune if you spare my workers. So the German commander replied, it's not money I want, it's blood. Workers and boss were lined up against the wall opposite and shot. Michel's grandmother told him the story again and again. When I was very little, she told me that you must never forget what happened to your great-grandfather. It was passed down through the family to my cousins and others. But it was really me who embraced the idea of keeping alive the memory of this horror. Because innocent people were murdered. There's no other way of putting it. In a place like Louvain, where life is peaceful and pleasant, not everyone wants to remember atrocities or think how they continue elsewhere in the world today. 
It's hard to imagine this placid Belgian town as it must have been a hundred years ago. In flames, refugees fleeing everywhere, like Aleppo or Gaza today. There was nothing accidental about German war crimes. They were part of their strategy. They thought they had the right to march through Belgium and Belgians had no right to resist and that they would use massacre as a way of cowing the population into submission in the hope that their leaders would surrender more quickly. It's exactly the same logic used by governments, generals and rebels who commit atrocities today. Those who carry the memories of their forefathers understand all that. They know that the past has echoes and peace is not an absence of conflict but an act of will. When you think back to yes. what happened yes. in 1914, can you forgive the people who did it? After all the years, we must forgive. And uh, during my studies, I knew German students also in Louvain. We had, I had friends, two, three friends, German. Mm. But, you know, uh, it's still, uh, after the war, is uh, difficult. The Germans, they were our enemies, in our family, that's for sure. But that was a long time ago. Now it's over. You couldn't talk about the Germans to my grandparents, of course. But then it passed, like everything does. It's a waste of time. You can never get revenge. Vengeance just perpetuates evil. Turn the page on all these terrible things. We shouldn't dwell on it, it's over. Do something else, go in a new direction, because if you always carry hatred and vengeance inside you, you'll never find peace. You don't get much more peaceful than Belgium today. It took another war, years of prosperity, treaties and institutions, and an understanding that you may forgive, but you must never forget.